What's up, Sushi Squad? We bagging up some more Minecraft Dungeons. The new content is here, and it's absolutely awesome. I actually just played through it all. I, I completely ended up beating the Nether. I did it with a bunch of friends. I have all of that recorded, so if you guys want to see me going through the Nether, uh, basically a couple levels each day or whatever, uh, you can always check those out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, but we're going to focus most of all on the free content first and then the paid nether DLC as well Because there is quite a bit to do with the patch notes in general now I'm assuming that you guys have a pretty good understanding of the game in general uh, But just to run over a few things very very quickly the blacksmith is kind of key with uh, a lot of gear in the game Because gear in general is always going to end up having a power score next to it So you can see this is 164 versus my uh, current sword, which is 165 so one thing that I found out is just before this update, I ended up grinding my character to Apocalypse Plus 20, which was the current most highest difficulty in the entire game. It was terrible. It wasn't a fun time. Uh, and in general, rule of thumb, in order to progress in this game, it's actually kind of gross because what the game wants you to do is constantly swap out your gear, which that's fine. But some of the gear that you get might not generate as powerful as some of the other gear. And when you get further and further towards the end game, I found a lot of the squishy, squishier armor to become absolutely useless because you will get one shot by enemies at the end game and there's nothing you can do about it so you always have to have some type of stunning or protection or something to protect yourself right and so just to argue a point this wither armor right now is the armor that i've been rocking lately but potentially if i ended up finding an armor that was 170 i would actually want to put that on top of my character even at the cost of making my character die a lot more often the point is that by hiring uh, uh, by having the highest gear score possible which is your power which is right under my uh harp bow uh, right here right by my character the higher your power the more powerful the gear can drop as you end up exploring the game and going to the higher difficulties so the game promotes you to constantly swap out to the latest most powerful gear in which case if you're doing that what i would recommend is to do that to build up as much power as possible and then use the blacksmith because what the blacksmith is going to do is if you take a lower number piece of gear like this is 155 if i throw this into the blacksmith i'll have to complete a couple dungeons here let me just do it because i don't care uh, so it wants me to beat uh, three missions that are at Apocalypse Plus 6 difficulty, which is easy peasy. The point is, once I end up completing those three missions, I can get this piece of gear back, and then it's going to end up being a much higher power score, right? So that is kind of what the end game is, and what I would recommend is to constantly try to keep your best gear at the highest power possible, but how do you justify that? Because of course it becomes procedurally more expensive to end up leveling up uh, higher and higher gear uh, and just at a higher, you know, you can see this right here for some reason is 680, I guess, because it's a unique versus this one that's 430. Now, if you end up uh, re-rolling the gear out of the blacksmith, the enchantments that spawn on it are always going to be the same, but it will take your enchantment points out of the gear rather than the normal way that you do that is by dismantling the gear. The reason all of this is very important is because they've got a new thing that's been added to the game and this is for absolutely free it's called ancient hunts and uh we'll talk about that in a minute but i just want to show you guys very very briefly that for free to play players you're going to get this new cape which is really cool it looks a lot better than the dlc uh cape this one you have to buy um but you will also end up getting the little pig baby which is kind of adorable look at him just hidden back there uh but for anyone that's actually got the season pass and the paid content you can get the baby gas with the nether update so there's two different ways you can do this you can either go down here or you can end up opening the map and accessing the ancient hunt right here this is going to be the legit way you get here rather than just opening the map and clicking it right here uh, we'll talk about that NPC over there in a second. So the ancient hunt is going to be very, very weird. So each of the pieces of gear that you can see right now all have different little icons, little rune letters beside them, right? And the point is that you're going to have to sacrifice uh, the piece of gear in order to end up opening a portal that triggers the ancient hunt. So this one's got a T. Uh, so this one also has a T. And the point being is that you want to have as much of the same letter as possible so that you can hopefully end up generating the most ancient mobs as possible so you can always end up opening a portal at three different items sacrificed I, i'm guessing it's so that you don't have to end up sacrificing any of your artifacts but if we throw an artifact in you can see it's not going to make much of a difference uh, to end up having more in there other than we just got ourselves a little bit extra of that runic number uh, but it doesn't seem to increase the price uh, or the percentage of anything um, this 
uh, you can see right here is unknown because I haven't fought many of the ancient mobs yet, only a select few. But the ancient mobs themselves are going to end up being super cracked out enchanted mobs, right? And they're going to end up dropping the new gear in the game, which is gilded gear. And we'll get into that in a bit. You can see that your chance of actually finding the ancient, uh, at least for me right now, just because I put such garbage gear into the portal, uh, is going to be 46%, and the average is going to be a 0 0.6 of ancients that you're going to end up finding on average, right? But you can always end up investing your enchantment points to end up increasing those odds. The problem is that the invested enchantment points is permanently gone. And this I have a very big problem with because what the end game is for Minecraft Dungeons is having enchantment points in your gear so that you can constantly swap them off because maybe, you know, maybe this one's more useful for the area than this one, etc. Right? So you can kind of have multiple builds on your character. And you really end up using those enchantment slots a lot. I mean, I'm at level 252, and I use up the majority of my enchantment slots for a lot of side gear and alternate builds, right? Well, that's gone because they want me to sacrifice as many of my enchantment points as possible. And the biggest problem is that because I'm such a high level, it actually takes me a lot longer to level up than it does another player who's at the beginning of the game. So I, I don't see where they're going with this. Like, I, I think if you ended up investing your enchantment points during the run and then when you came back out, you got your points back, that would make a little bit more sense. Okay, cool. But generally speaking, I just, I, I don't understand it. It's very weird. Whatever. But the coolest thing about the Ancient Hunt is the end game aesthetic of it all is really, really cool because basically you're going to be generated into a random biome. And then when you get through that screen, you'll go through another portal and then it'll throw you into a completely different biome. It can be a snow area, a nether area, uh, a, a desert area, all three within the same run. So it keeps it really fresh and really interesting, which is cool. Now onto the Gilded Gear. Once you end up completing your first Ancient Hunt, you'll unlock this little idiot. And he's going to end up actually selling you Gilded Gear. Uh, you can still get Gilded Gear from the Ancient Mobs I mentioned previously. Uh, the point is that you can't get normal gear off of normal mobs, so the goal of the Ancient Hunt is literally to rush the Ancient Mobs if you can, but the enemies are just so powerful, it just... Eh. Anyways, this guy is going to end up just selling you Gilded Gear, but the trick is that he sells it for gold, which is a new currency that you'll get within Ancient Hunts. So if you open a chest that drops emeralds, maybe it'll end up dropping some gold with it. Maybe it'll just drop gold. That's how you get it. Um, and then that's how you end up buying these things from him. And Gilded Gear, you can see it's all fancy. It's got a big gold bar behind it. It is literally going to be all of the default gear in the entire game, but to have a Gilded stat to it, it basically just means that it's going to have a extra passive enchantment. So you can see on this one, it's got strong versus enchanted mobs, uh, and that's at two. So enchantment level two. So I can get that enchantment on some bows just in general, right? Like I think that's this one right here. Unenchanting projectile deal more damage to enchanted enemies, right? So the fact that it has a passive of this at level two means that uh, it's actually doing 75% bonus damage to enchanted mobs. That's what this gilded gear is doing. I could find the same bow gilded with a different uh, substat, with a different sub enchantment. And as you can see, uh, again, the important thing is that this is enchantment level two, meaning that I could potentially end up finding uh, the same bow that would have enchantment level one or enchantment level three. The reason I'm making this uh, statement so dragged out and obvious is because it means that Gilded Gear is literally RNG on RNG on RNG. You gotta get the Gilded Gear in the first place and then you gotta get it with a good enchantment stat that is going to end up being of a high enough value to be worthwhile of using. And then on top of that, there's still the three enchantments down on the bottom that are going to end up being on the gear that hopefully are going to end up being, um, well, something useful. Now, <laughs> on top of that, you can get unique gilded gear. Now, unique gear in the game already just has a passive enchantment. So there's the bone club, which has great pushback as its passive. And then the unique bone, uh, bone club, which is the bone cudgel, which has the great pushback. Okay, but it also has extra damage to illagers. So this gilded would have one extra enchantment stat passive. And then this gilded would have an extra one on top of the unique ability. So unique gilded gear can end up being the most cracked out gear in the entire game, which means again, 
it's RNG on RNG on RNG because you gotta get it to be gilded, you gotta get it to be unique, you gotta get the gilded stat to end up being something worthwhile, you gotta get the gilded stat to end up being hopefully plus three, and you gotta end up having the sub enchantments, the you know, the normal enchantments to end up being something that is worthwhile. So yeah, they basically just ended up taking this update and making all the gear irrelevant in the entire game and making it so that the gilded gear uh, can end up just being the absolute best. But of course it requires a lot of effort. So are you going to end up getting any of that stuff and getting good drops? Well, good luck with that. Uh, so there's a couple of our little quality of life updates uh, we'll kind of mention as well. Uh, they have a bunch of new enchantments, which I don't go into too much detail about what most of those are. I can show you guys what some of them are, but generally speaking, um, the biggest things that this update seems to focus on is potion builds. So as you end up using a potion, something will happen. And I've seen a lot of the new enchantments doing stuff like that. But there's also a lot of new enchantments that end up giving melee builds a lot more attention, which is really, really nice because melee builds kind of slowly fell off to the side. That said, there's a lot more focus on archery as well. And just in general, they, they've really, really, uh, you know, done a good job of adding a lot more enchantments and a lot more gear to vary it up. Now, uh, they've also added some quality of life things to the map and also progression uh, to how the uh, apocalypse difficulty works. So you can see uh, Creeper Woods is broken, by the way. The, there is no new map on Creeper Woods. It's just linking to here. But you'll see that we got a little icon showing that there's a uh, boss on this map. There's a boss on this map. This is nothing new. We already knew where there was bosses on these maps, but now it actually reflects that, which is cool. Uh, but you might see just behind me here, uh, this 10 actually says that I need to slay 10 bosses. And the reason for that uh, is because the way that the game works in terms of progression now is as you end up getting to all these different apocalypse levels, basically you get to apocalypse seven and then you start into the apocalypse plus. And that's where you get some of the best gear in the game. It just scales higher and higher and higher and can end up being a lot stronger and stuff like that. Uh, the re-rolling for rares near as I can tell is an internal re-roll. So a piece of gear might drop, but what it's going to do is it's going to re-roll that gear twice to hopefully end up being at a higher value. So you end up getting a lot more uniques the higher your apocalypse level, right? But you can see right here, complete three boss missions on Apocalypse Plus 9 in order to unlock Apocalypse 10. And so on and so on and so forth. So uh, basically, uh, it's going to end up increasing in interval as you end up getting uh, to the next three portals and so on and so forth. And now Apocalypse goes all the way to Apocalypse Plus 25. The point is that Apocalypse 20 used to be the strongest, but what they actually have done is they've cranked down the difficulty and actually rescaled it so it's not as gross because Apocalypse Plus 20 was disgusting. Take it from me. Uh, they've actually made it so that Plus 10 was the previous Apocalypse 20, but the scaling is a lot better, so it's a lot easier to deal with. And then they just ended up adding all these extra 15 levels on top of it. So good luck with that. Uh, so a couple other things to note for uh, free to play players is that they actually have a return to checkpoint. So this is particularly useful if you end up getting stuck or anything. Uh, you can always open your pause menu and return to checkpoint. That's going to end up returning you to the recent checkpoint from in a map. So, it, you know. Sometimes you would end up just doing a dungeon and you end up getting frozen or something and then you just get screwed. I wish that the checkpoint saved because I've had the game crash on me a couple times right when I was at the end of the dungeon and then all the progress is just lost. Thankfully, you keep all of the gear that you ended up finding, but you don't get to complete the dungeon and, you know, get all the items from it. Uh, they also ended up having an, uh, an update for Xbox Series X and S enhanced where you actually have like 4K textures and 60 FPS, 120 FPS, stuff like that, right? So that, as far as I'm concerned, covers all of the free-to-play content, which again is very, very beautiful. Uh, and now we're going to talk about the DLC. But before we get into that, one thing that I wanted to point out, which I think is super duper cool and really interesting, is I ended up finding out because one of my friends, uh, most of my friends all have the DLC so I only found this out recently that a buddy of mine who didn't have the DLC because you actually get Minecraft Dungeons for free with Xbox Game Pass that applies to PC and Xbox as well um, but you don't end up getting the DLC with Xbox Game Pass right so the point is that I was able to take my friend into the DLC and even gift them the DLC items and they got to keep it so that's really cool it's, it's cool that you can actually like 
get the new DLC item so long as one of your friends can carry you into the world. And it doesn't do something stupid where it says, you don't own the DLC, so you can't equip this. It's actually really nice and really promotes people to buy this DLC just to play it with their friends and stuff rather than being super duper greedy. You know what I mean? Uh, so we'll go through all of the different... Um, all the different gear and all the different uniques and stuff like that. Uh, I won't go through the levels because I'm going to have uh, the levels actually shown on camera within, you know, my other uh, my other uh, videos over the next couple days. But you'll start in the Nether Waste and then you're going to unlock the Basalt Delta and the Warped Forest. And then uh, throughout going those into those maps, you're going to end up getting uh, the map to the Crimson Forest and the map to the Soul Sand Valley. And if I'm not mistaken, the Soul Sand Valley ended up dropping the map to the Nether Fortress. Maybe that was in the Crimson Woods. I don't know. The point is that even though these map, uh, these are supposed to be shown as like, whoops, these are supposed to be shown as like a secret location where you have to get a map within a level to unlock it. It's, it's automated. In the Nether update, you literally will find the map every single time. And it's just right in front of you. You just go through the level. You end up finding it. Okay, cool, whatever. We got six levels for the DLC. So that's already the best DLC out of the entire game because all these ones, uh, we only ended up getting three. Uh, one of them including the secret area, which was a genuinely secret area to end up going through. And one of my biggest issues with the DLC is that these maps usually end up ranging like 40 minutes or something. It's actually ridiculously long versus doing a shorter, sweeter map that ends up getting you a lot more gear. However, in the Nether, update even when the maps are really really long you're consistently getting gear drops all the time like i don't know if they ended up buffing the gear drop rate but it really is you know it's not a problem if you play the longer map now uh versus the older dlc where you know the playing the longer map was actually less effective than just going to a really really short map uh most of all the vanilla maps were actually the most efficient to grind now, I haven't tested this out on the older DLC. I only ever, you know, I just went through all of the nether content. So I know for a fact that the gear drops in here are absolutely cracked. They're really, really good. I'm hoping that this is just a buff overall to the drop rates because then it means that going through these DLC maps becomes a lot more viable because you're can, going to consistently start getting drops. So uh, I'll try and figure that out. But if someone's actually gone through these maps and has noticed a significant increase in drop rates, you can leave a comment in the comments down below. Let's actually look at all of the new gear because it is absolutely beautiful. Uh, I'm just kind of skimming through to see because they mentioned the new weapons, the new armor and stuff like that. All right, so I'll remember to end up putting uh, screenshots of all these armors. Big shout out to my buddies, uh, D and Nokia, because we ended up going through um, all of this content together. We actually basically rushed it and I can't wait to take my time with it and grind it, but I, you know, I wanted to get this video out to you guys to show you all the new gear. Uh, I'll probably have a separate video that I'll end up showing all the gear as well, just because people maybe are a little bit more curious about that specifically rather than squeezing it into a patch note. So first we've got the, uh, unique version of the pig armor. Uh, so the passives on the armor in general are going to be reset artifact cooldown on potion use. 50% artifact damage that is just going to be on the normal pig armor as well uh, but the unique has can get consumable on potion use so that's going to end up being, being the unique trait which can end up being pretty darn good honestly speaking uh, and then the piglin armor itself uh, and then we've got the vines armor so this is going to end up uh, the basic version has health potions heal nearby allies traps and poisons nearby mobs when rolling so when you roll it will end up entrapping them in vines and poisoning them so that's pretty cool because there's a couple new enchantments that will actually end up increasing uh, your poison damage your lightning damage your fire damage you name it uh, including a lot of uh, enchantments that end up helping your allies and making them stronger or move faster whatever but the unique ends up reducing your roll cooldown so that's kind of neat that uh that could end up being a really really cracked set if you end up getting the right uh enchantments to end up spawning on it uh so then for the artifacts there's going to end up uh, i can actually just show you guys these in game because i already got them so there's the spin blade which this one's really really cool i like this one a lot uh, the spin blade is going to be like a ninja star shuriken and the thing that's so cool about it is that since it phases through enemies it will actually tag them all and you can also actually dodge it when it comes back and have it swirl around you and it's continually doing damage slowly of course getting closer and closer to us so uh, it definitely has some cool effects to it for sure and that's 25k each 
uh, each hit just because of the fact that I've got it at 167 for the gear score. Uh, then there's the Blast Fungus. These do 20k each, and you basically just throw them up, and they just blast all around. It's actually adorable as well as deadly. Very, very cool. Love that artifact. That one's actually really, really nice. And then probably the strongest one that I've come across because I use the harp bow at all uh, occasions just because the projectiles that you throw off of this thing are insane. Uh, harp bow has always just been my go-to, the strongest bow in the game as far as I would argue. And even more so now that we've got thundering quiver because what this is going to do is give you thundering arrows. So it does a lot of extra damage on them. But on top of it, uh, what it's going to do is when an arrow tags an enemy, it's going to shoot an electricity out of that enemy to tag the other ones. And since the harp bow ends up shooting so many arrows at once, this is literally screen clearing because it's just going to tag all of the enemies that are around when there's a whole bunch of them. And it's going to end up giving you quite a few arrows that you can end up shooting before it and the artifact itself uh, ends up actually going on cooldown. So really, really neat stuff. Uh, then there's also going to end up being, where is it? There is the power, where is it? There it is, the power shaker. So the power shaker, uh, is uh, when it's active your next few melee attacks cause mobs to explode and this is actually really really cool So if I put it on you'll see that I've got four attacks before it ends up going away So the next four attacks are going to end up doing one attack and then the artifact procs another attack the artifact procs another attack the artifact procs uh, it is on a time limit, so if you don't end up expending those, you like you can't stack them basically uh, I want to see just because I actually have two of these can they stack with each other? Because that's important to know. Can I get four and then another four on top of it? No, it just locks out the other artifact. Okay, whatever. Kind of cool though, right? That's kind of neat. Uh, so that covers the artifacts. Now we're actually moving on to the bows. Uh, so there's going to be two different bows. Uh, well, actually there's uh, four total, but we're going to be talking about the piglin bow right here. So uh, the base attack is going to end up having a wind-up attack, and then the unique bow is going to end up having chance of firing bolts. Uh, so I can show you guys this right here just because I got lucky to have them. So you can see in the top left, it's actually charging arrows. So when you have all five charges, you can bop, 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 and it's all shot out. And then you can continue shooting, but it's going to be super duper slow. So it kind of promotes you. Uh, I kind of like this bow because it promotes you using it in a burst and then just focusing on melee. So this would actually be a really good bow that you could end up using with, well, with a melee build, which is neat. Uh, and then, you know, the fact that chance to fire a piercing shot is uh, a really nice uh, passive enchantment for, uh, uh, for an, uh, you know, a unique ability. Uh, and then there's going to end up being the Twisted Vine Bow. Uh, the Twisted Vine Bow, I don't actually personally have the unique one, but I do have a screenshot of it. So the Twisting Vine Bow is going to have Poison Trail as its passive, which is actually really, really cool. Because look at that, dude. I kind of want to have Poison Trail on gear, not going to lie. But it seems like it's just on this bow, which is still really, really cool. And then, of course, it's going to end up doing poison damage across this whole thing. Uh, so you could literally just shoot all over and cause the entire screen to end up going across, right? It's just, it's beautiful. It really is. Uh, so that's going to have poison trail. And then, of course, the uh, unique of it is going to have charged arrows after a roll. So charged arrows after roll is actually a really, really good, um, really, really good enchantment be just because it means that roll builds just got even stronger. So if you have, you know, the vine armor that ended up having reduced roll cooldown, so you could roll and then your next shot would guaranteed be a fully charged shot. So when you're using a normal bow, a charge shot is going to do a lot more damage. I always just use crossbows, so it doesn't really apply to me but still really, really cool. Uh, so there's going to be the Bone Club, which has great pushback as its basic, and then the unique version, which is going to end up having extra damage to Illagers. All unique items do is just have an extra uh, enchantment passively on them. So this one's pretty cool, just because it's got a one, two, and that's all its attack is. So it can end up being really, really powerful because it only has a combo of two. So certain uh, enchantments will end up only triggering after you've done a combo. So that's really nice. Uh, this one also, I wanted to show you guys this because Pain Cycle is a really cool one. So it basically means that after five attacks, our sixth attack is going to end up doing four times the damage. And it can end up being really good on this thing because it's already doing 30 and 38k on the second hit. So the Pain Threshold does over 100k you can see right there. So if I end up making sure that I build it on the second combo... 
Um, one. Oh, I see. It's always just the one, two. Well, either way, that's over 100k. So that's an insane amount of damage just for that weapon. So really, really cool. Um, and then there's going to end up being the uh, probably my new favorite weapon in the game, which is the saw blade. So this is the broken saw blade, uh, considering that there is the unique version. So it's going to have continuous attack. So the continuous attack is you can either just attack with it. And, you know, that's pretty cool just because it's probably one of the faster weapons in the game. But if you hold the attack, I mean, look at that. It spams it until, of course, the weapon overheats. But still, dude, this does some of the highest damage in the game because that's 10k per. And I mean, of course, I'm at the end game, so it's really high gear score. But still, that is absolutely insane. The I also got this with three smiting on it. Uh, if you end up getting it with swirl and stuff like that, you can literally just have swirl going off 24-7. Uh, it's kind of a broken weapon, though, just because it doesn't work very well. Because if you end up getting like swirl on it or something, uh, it doesn't always trigger. So let, let me actually just show you guys this because I'll get rid of this gear later. So I got swirl right here. So uh, basically, if I hold my attack, nothing seems to happen. It just does it when I turn it off. What I found, I, I play this on controller, even though I'm on PC. So maybe mouse and keyboard would be a bit different. But if I go one, two, three, and then I hold it, then it actually spams it properly. So I would love to see them fix it. Just because it's kind of disgusting that it doesn't uh, doesn't work properly. Uh, the unique version of it, however, is literally just going to have a longer continuous attack. But it also just looks badass because it's going to end up being glowing red like it's on fire. So that's really neat. Uh, I think that covers all of the gear. Uh, and let me actually just double check and see. Yeah, so then there's just a couple other uh, quick things that they mention in regards to enchantment slots, the blacksmith, mob enchantments, artifact cooldown, and a bunch of rebalances to some of this stuff. Uh, and then a couple fixes. So yeah, that pretty much is going to end up covering the entirety of the update. So we were able to get through those patch notes pretty quickly. And I was really, really fortunate that I was able to get all of these so I could show you guys. Now, the thing is, with all the other previous updates, uh, I've ended up going through the content pretty darn quickly you know so there wasn't really much reason uh for me to end up continuously playing so usually i would do like one stream here one stream there or just a couple individual videos to end up highlighting all the new stuff and then we would just end up moving on however because this update has the gilded update and it, because the ancient hunt portals are actually so entertaining to me anyways basically what I'm telling you guys is you can expect to see Minecraft Dungeons on the channel for quite some time before it ends up getting old. So uh, you can watch out for that. I I'm just really excited that there's actually a reason to end up getting back into this game and start grinding it. But anyways, I, I don't mean to ramble. That's that's all we're going to talk about today. So again, be sure to like, subscribe. Uh, you know, you can buy the merch you want to support the channel and stuff like that. Have yourselves a great day. And I hope you look forward to seeing the new content. Now, the other thing too, I want, I want you guys to keep in mind because I already rushed through all this content, it means that the other videos that you're gonna see are in the past. So this is the future that you're seeing right now. And then the other videos where we're going through all of this stuff means that we're discovering the gear for the first time. So don't be confused if you see me there, uh, if you see me sitting there freaking out, like what the, what's the saw blade do? Because I hadn't gotten it in all of that recorded footage. And then, of course, once we end up catching up to having all of this done, uh, well, then I'll probably start streaming Minecraft Dungeons a little bit more often and actually doing some ancient hunts and stuff. If I don't already stream just in between all of that stuff. But anyways, have a great day, guys. Sign on and stay up, gamers.